Hello minions and welcome to another episode of Weapon Tactics for Modern Warfare. I'm Wheezy and today we are going to be covering the Bruin Mark 9 LMG. The Bruin is overall an excellent LMG, especially once you've unlocked a lot of the attachments for it. We'll go over that in more detail. But first, let's talk about the overall strengths of the Bruin. First, it has high ammo capacity. This is primarily what you bring LMGs for, is they have those belts or at least large magazines. The Bruin has both. And what this does is this gives you the ability to use the Bruin to engage and kill numerous targets without reloading. It can be very nice to not have to worry about whether or not someone else is going to walk into the room and you're going to run out of ammo. The Bruin allows you to kill in regular multiplayer three, four, five, six people before you have to reload using the default magazine uh, belt size. And it's also very forgiving when you miss shots. Um, part of what LMGs I feel like are often used for is people who may be a little bit more concerned about running out of ammo because maybe their shots aren't always on, and the LMG is a lot more forgiving. The Bruin is also no exception to that rule, and it will be very forgiving when, when you miss shots because you can continue to fire. Uh, the other main strength of the Bruin is the fact that it has good damage even at range. So it has good damage up close, and that damage does not fall off very quickly at all. And so you'll find yourself getting three or four shot kills on people regardless of range. And when outfitted with the proper attachments, the Bruin's overall uh, recoil can be, can be tamed. So um, a consistent rate of fire, decent stopping power, and high ammo capacity make it so that the Bruin can engage targets effectively at any range. So let's discuss the weaknesses of the Bruin. Being an LMG, these weaknesses are pretty typical of what you'll see of most LMGs. First, it has very low mobility. That means that it has slow aim down sights time, and overall just slow movement around the map when you're carrying it. This can also be mitigated with attachments, but it is what it is when you first unlock it. Uh, the other thing that is a weakness of the Bruin is that it has jumpy recoil. Uh, it's not particularly severe recoil, at least as far as how much it recoils vertically, but it's very unpredictable and hard to anticipate, at least compared with other weapons, because it feels to hop around. This is also something we'll try to mitigate with attachments. And the final thing, and perhaps the biggest weakness of the Bruin, is it has an extremely slow reload when using the default belt. It, you know, you don't have to reload this weapon very often, and you can kill numerous people before you have to reload, but if your belt runs out and you have to reload, you need to hide, because it will take a while. Now let's get into map movement and engagement. The first point we want to touch on with the Bruin is that you want to play methodically. Because of the low mobility, you need to anticipate enemy locations and ADS early, especially when you're still going through the unlock tree and you haven't yet gotten the attachments that help speed up the ADS and the mobility. You need to be very tactical and make sure that when you think you're going to encounter an enemy that you get your, your sights up early. The other thing I would suggest that I found in my playtime is that I want to use tactical sprint sparingly. So as you probably know in Modern Warfare there's two levels of sprint. There's the normal sprint and then if you double click sprint then you get the tactical sprint which has a much shorter duration but it's faster. This also decreases um, your aim down, or increases your aim down, aim down sights time. It makes your weapon slower to handle. and it can feel really uh, necessary to use tactical sprint a lot when carrying an LMG because it reduces your overall mobility, but I found I was much more effective not using tactical sprint unless I was really trying to escape open cover just because the ability to get my sights up more quickly was much more important than moving around the map quickly. Um, and the last thing that I would focus on with the Bruin for your engagement is to use volume of fire. The Bruin has a lot of ammo. It's an LMG. So take advantage of this. Don't be, you know, don't be conservative with your ammo. Shoot and shoot until your enemies are dead. And if you're in a longer fight with an enemy, then overwhelm them with your volume of fire. Don't stop firing. Even if you're behind cover, use pre-fire. Just whatever you can do, you can outshoot your enemy unless they're using an LMG, which isn't extremely common in Modern Warfare, then they will have to stop and reload long before you do, and this really gives you an advantage in longer fights to just make them feel like they are being pinned down by half a team. So, the Bruin is an extremely powerful weapon and extremely versatile. Once you anticipate the, the weaknesses that it has and 
work on mitigating those, it can be an extremely enjoyable weapon to use, and I've absolutely loved it. So when should you disengage with the Bruin? I like to cover this for every weapon. The first opportunity for disengagement is when you are fighting enemies in a longer fight at longer range when their weapon is more accurate than yours, which will be most. We can mitigate the recoil on the Bruin pretty well and make it actually surprisingly accurate at range, but if you're up against a sniper or an assault rifle that just has a, an overall better accuracy than you do, it's best not to stick out those fights. You're going to find yourself losing them more often than you win them. Another time you should disengage, especially when you're using the, uh, well, really only when you're using the belt, is to reload. If you, if you find yourself running out of ammo, hopefully because you've already killed five, six, seven people before you've had to reload, if you're reloading the belt, you really need to go and find a place to hide. You shouldn't be trying to reload as you're continuing to move around the map just because it's too risky for you to encounter someone. Other than that, I would say stay and spray. <laughs> you want to uh, make sure that anything, you know, other than long range when it's easier to disengage or when you're reloading, you're probably better off just letting the volume of fire of the weapon carry you through a fight as opposed to trying to use its low mobility to run away. So. If you're not reloading, if you're not at long range, stay and spray. Okay, so let's talk about Warzone. This is the first weapon tactics video where I'm going to include a specific uh, Warzone breakdown. And I'm going to do this more often, but especially for the Bruin, it is very pertinent. Because the Bruin feels very powerful in Warzone. I suspected this in multiplayer with its relatively, you know, few number of shots to kill and its longer range that it would be suited well to Warzone if you can increase its overall mobility. And that has turned out to be the case. I really enjoy the Bruin in Warzone. It has an extremely fast time to kill against fully armored targets. I have found myself easily able to down two and sometimes three fully armored players before needing to reload and this is when running my warzone kit which I will show you here in a second with the magazine uh, capacity instead of the belt fed to get the faster reload and with the increased mobility of the 60 round magazine versus the belt and the other attachments that I'll show you for my warzone kit I have just I've been enjoying the Bruin so much in warzone and it's been so effective that I'll show you a clip. In one game, uh, I actually got killed uh, by someone on a roof before I was able to really utilize my Bruin. And as it turns out, he ended up grabbing my gun and melting both me and my duo's teammate later on in that same match. So such an effective build that I managed to get myself killed with it. One right area. here. What the fuck? They hit us hard that time. We will settle the score. Oh, that was my fucking gun he killed me with. Wow. So let's talk about our general goals with attachments and upgrades on the Bruin. The main things that we want to do are tame its relatively unpredictable recoil, increase its aim down sight speed, increase its overall mobility, and decrease its insanely long reload. So, as you may have figured out from other weapon tactics videos, fundamentally, the strongest weapons in Modern Warfare are assault rifles, and so the best builds, typically for other weapon classes, if they don't have a particularly specific uh, strength that they're tailored to, like shotguns, then really what you want to do is try and make them play more like assault rifles with some sort of extra trait. So. Our build for the Bruin is going to focus on essentially making a powerful, high-capacity assault rifle. So the first build I'm going to show you for the Bruin is intended for general multiplayer. Uh, I call this my ARLMG because, as I mentioned, we're going to try and make the Bruin play more like an assault rifle. So we've got the tactical suppressor, the skeleton stock, stippled grip tape, commando foregrip, and 60-round mags. And these attachments do pretty much everything that we want to uh, as far as achieving our goals of reducing and taming the recoil. The commando foregrip increases stability. The skeleton stock and stippled grip tape, stippled grip tape attachments help us to uh, increase our aim down sight speed. Um, well, rather decrease our aim down sight speed. We can aim down sights faster like this. <laughs> the 60 round mags also help us aim down sights faster and 
eliminate the issue of the slow recoil and you'll find that 60 rounds is more than enough for multiplayer and the tactical suppressor we're using instead of the monolithic suppressor because again we're trying to maintain aim down sight speed here and we really don't need a boost to um, range with the Bruin. The second build I'm going to show you is also for multiplayer um, and this one I wanted to keep the belt fed part of it just so it's uh, more true to the intent of the LMG um, and so what we have here is a tactical suppressor, the reflex sight, skeleton stock, stippled grip tape, and commando foregrip. I'm using this one as more of a uh, general long range but also stealthy build. Um, the idea being that I use this on my objective kits and my stealth kits where um, I'm maybe not expecting to live past one full belt of ammo or in the case of the stealth kit I'm anticipating being able to engage targets and then perhaps find a place to hide if I get to the point where I need to reload. So if maybe your play style is, is more based on um, not necessarily trying to maximize the amount of time you're alive, this is actually a really good build to, to engage a lot of targets before you even have to reload a single time. If you use this build, I think a lot of times you will realize that you can go entire games without ever reloading. So now real briefly, I'll just show you my general multiplayer preferred Wheezy build for the Bruin. This is just if I were going to build a loadout that is going to maximize the effectiveness of this weapon, regardless of the game mode, here's what I would do. My AR LMG build as my primary. My secondary weapon, pistol of choice. I have, you know, just a random pistol here. The Renetti is a good choice. You're, you're probably not going to be switching to that unless you run out of ammo and you just have to do a switch, but in this case, secondary weapon is not as important. Quick fix, as my perk one, you're going to be attracting a lot of attention and engaging a lot of targets, so every time you kill someone, being able to restart health gen is going to increase your longevity, and I've just really become a fan of that perk. Ghost, pretty ubiquitous, even though we're going to be putting out a lot of unsuppressed fire. We're not exactly going to be super sneaky here, but when we're not engaging directly, this will give us the opportunity to get to a location and get set up without getting picked off. Battle hardened, again, since you'll probably be holding down a location, this will make you more resistant to incoming stun grenades so that you can continue to lay down that volume of fire. Um, lethal is your weapon of choice there. I choose to use the Semtex instead of the C4 for the main reason that when you use the action button twice, or the reload button as it were to uh, detonate the C4. This can be particularly problematic with LMGs when you're not intending to reload a larger magazine, um, although reload canceling can fix that. And then the stun grenade, which has become, you know, my tactical grenade of choice. Okay, now let's talk about the Warzone build for the Bruin, and I have absolutely fallen in love with this thing. It has the monolithic suppressor, TAC laser, GI mini reflex, 60 round magazine and commando foregrip. So this is a little bit of a deviation from what we use in multiplayer and I'll explain why. The monolithic suppressor, again Warzone inherently has longer range engagements than your average multiplayer game. So we're going with a monolithic suppressor. So we're going to sacrifice a little bit of aim down sight speed, um, but you'll see we'll get some of that back with attack laser in exchange for maximizing our, our damage potential. Also, um, the reason I'm using the mini reflex, like I did in some of my multiplayer builds, is the iron sights are actually pretty bulky on the Bruin, and so I like having a nice clean optic. And the mini reflex um, and any of the other micro red dot sights have the fastest aim down sight speed while still having an optic. You could use something more magnified, but again, you're going to be trading off uh, aim down sight speed for that. And uh, the 60 round magazine is to help increase our you know overall mobility. And I find, and the, the faster reload is is absolutely critical in Warzone. You cannot afford an LMG reload ever in Warzone, um, and it's just I have found myself saved by this thing so many times. The Commando foregrip is to continue to tame that recoil. That that increases our you know recoil stability. And the tack laser is absolutely critical here. In general, I like to avoid lasers on my weapons, especially in normal multiplayer, just because I don't like giving away my position. The range you'll be engaging targets with uh, this, the Bruin in Warzone, makes that less of an issue. Plus, with your stopping power and volume of fire, it's it's not going to be as big a detriment as it could be otherwise. And the increases you get to aim down sight speed and overall mobility are just an absolute necessity 
in order to be able to to really make this thing feel mobile and usable for Warzone. So my Warzoner build for the Bruin, I have I have used it extensively and I just could not be more happy with it. Um, if you guys give it a shot, I think you're really going to fall in love with it too. And so briefly I want to touch on my overall Warzone class as well, um, although I have a couple that, of variations. Um, I'm using the, obviously the Warzoner and I tip, tend to try and use the, I like the RPG as a secondary for Warzone just because when you get this from a loadout drop, it's good to have that RPG as an option, even though oftentimes I will turn around and drop that RPG in exchange for something more close range like an SMG I've picked up during the game. Um, EOD, because C4 and RPGs are, are so commonplace in Warzone. Ghost, to stay off of heartbeat sensors and UAVs, and Amped, for that faster weapon swap. This is primarily for, again, when you're gonna switch between uh, an SMG and an LMG and this LMG, um, although also helpful when you're using rockets. Um, C4 and the heartbeat sensor, this is kind of my go-to. If I'm gonna get one loadout drop, this sets me up for success. Um, other things that I might switch if I'm using a different kit, um, if you wanna use overkill and get a more, you know, treat this as your primary weapon and then have an MP5 or something as your closer range SMG, you can trade out Ghost for that, and then this would be the kind of class that maybe later you could get a second loadout drop for to get your Ghost perk on top of that. Um, sometimes I'll do that with a sniper kit loadout, but in general, for a, I'm going to drop in, if I was going to solo a, uh, you know, if I was going to do a Warzone solo, this would be the Warzone build that I would take. So that's it for the Bruin Mark IX weapon tactics for Modern Warfare. I hope you guys got a lot of information about this. Uh, it's going to be helpful to you. Uh, if you use this and you uh, want to come back and share whether or not it was successful for you, please comment below. Also, if you have a build that you like a little bit better, you know, chime in. I love to hear other people's perspectives on these things. I am going to put um, the write-up for this, so all of the uh, loadouts, um, that I showed in this video. I'm going to post alongside this on the on my website, wheeziesgaming.com. So if you guys want to be able to download those images so you can refer to them without having to rewatch the video, go check that out. I'll have that linked in the description. Um, make sure you guys, you know, subscribe if you guys want to have more, uh, you know, be notified when there are more good informational videos like this. Um, like it if you enjoyed it. Dislike it if you thought it sucked and you want me to do something different. Um, I hope you guys stick around for more, and I will talk to you minions later.